The title is Own It. Right. What's behind those words? Well, I think many layers are behind the words. You know, what I'm hearing from women, particularly in the post-election world, is, hey, what we were doing before to advance women in business, it actually stalled out some time ago. So what can we do differently today? Not wait for the guys to get it, right? Not wait to be empowered, which means to be given power. A word you hate. We'll a talk about that in a I moment. Hate. You call this the fourth wave of feminism. Yeah, yeah. What is that wave? I say that money can be the fourth wave of feminism. So part of my work has been identifying the gender money gaps. We've all heard about the gender pay gap. But there's a gender investing gap that costs your viewers and listeners hundreds of thousands, some millions of dollars over the course of their lives. And so I've built Eleveth, a digital investment platform for women. Some people look at this and say, oh, that's, that's sexist. Uh-uh, not at all, quite the opposite. Because we do things on it, like in putting together the financial and investing plans, recognizing that we women live longer than men. Super important for retirement. That our salaries tend to peak sooner than men. That we take more career breaks than men do. All of these things are important to recognize because what we know now, the gender investing gap, is driven by the fact that what's out there to date hasn't fit exactly right for women. You rose to be the most powerful woman on Wall Street, no question. You were the CFO of Citigroup and you got fired. Yes. And today you say you got fired because you were a woman. I that know. is a provocative statement. Provocative and shocking and if you'd asked me at the time I would have said, Poppy, this was a boardroom brawl. I mean, it had nothing to do with the fact that I was a woman. So to back up, I was running Smith Barney at Citigroup during the crisis. We had sold products to clients that were supposed to be low risk, that ended up being high risk, that were supposed to go down a little bit and ended up going down everything. I went to my new boss and said, we got a problem. Let's partially reimburse our clients. He said, no, it went back and forth and back and forth. It went to the board, we did it. I, and I was later fired, but not, not very much later. Um, I was the only one, to the best of my knowledge, on Wall Street to do it. And as time has passed, I've said, you know what? Was it a coincidence that I was the only senior woman at the company, one of the only senior women in the whole industry, yeah. and I was the only one to return client money? Was there something about my difference, my femaleness, that led to that? Do you think that the crisis would have been, the financial crisis, to the magnitude that it was? if women were running the big banks? I would say it a little bit differently if we'd had diverse teams running the big banks. And there is no doubt in my mind. On the one hand, again, love guys, but there's research about homogenous groups mispricing risk. So the mispricing is on the order of 55 or 60 percent about what the markets went down in the crisis. On the other side, there's research that shows that diverse teams, and in particular gender diverse teams, deliver results that are higher returns with lower risk. But you recently wrote that you hate the word empower yes. and empowerment. Yes. Why? Well, I haven't liked it for forever. And I always thought it was because it was overused. And I thought it was like the word authentic, right? Which, you know, <laughs> people mean well, but you're like, everybody's saying it, stop saying it. And then I happened to look it up in the dictionary, and it means to be given power. To be given power. We don't need to be empowered. As mentioned, we control $5 trillion of investable assets. We're 80% of consumer spending. We direct it. We're more than half the workforce. Mm. And yet, with all that power, so much of the advice to us as women at work is to act like men. <laughs> right? But yeah. what? What? We bring such great qualities. The power of diversity is diversity, not bringing in a bunch of women and telling them to act like a bunch of guys. Likeability. Let's yes. talk about that because this confounds me. Likeability and success are positively correlated in men yep. and negatively correlated for us women. Yes. What? What? And it's terrible, right? But you think about the CEO and, gosh, he seems like a great guy and I'd love to have a drink with him. But every senior woman you think of, ooh, you know, she must have been a real, you know what, to make it to the top. There's actually, it gets even worse because there's research that's not in the book that says that when women are seen to be looking for power or attention, the emotion it evokes in us is disgust and moral outrage. We just have to be aware of it. The F word. Failure. It's not profanity, <laughs> it's failure. And you've said that women need to get over it. 
Yes. What was your biggest failure? Oh, you know, that getting fired thing was a pretty big deal. So how'd you get over it? <laughs> well, so first I had a national day of a uh, pity party for Sally. And then I said, I've got something I've got to learn from this. Um, this is a big lesson. And so I actually called the members of the board and asked each of them, thank Why? each of them for the opportunity and asked them how I could have done better. Wow. This is a learning opportunity for me and I'm going to move on. But women and girls tend to take failure harder than boys and men. Men blame outside factors. We blame ourselves. Paid parental leave. We'll likely see some action in Washington on this. You have bipartisan so. support. Mm -hmm. Why does it matter for women to actually get the equality that we deserve in pay? Yes. Why does this need to change? Well, it gets us back into the workforce. If we don't have parental leave, maternal, maternal leave to start with, but parental leave, we drop out of the workforce. I think only 20% of companies in this country have maternal leave. And if you're stitching together sick days and vacation days and you have to come back days after you have a child, you're much more likely to drop out of the workforce. That is despite new research that shows that maternal leaves pay for themselves in the first year. Well, yeah, you have to pay for the woman to go on leave, but she comes back, yeah. so you don't have to replace her and you don't have to train her replacement. She, at the same time, continues to earn, invest in her 401k, that er those earnings go into our economy, not just then, but for years to come. It helps to close our retirement savings gap, which is a woman's issue. So what would your message be to the administration? We know Ivanka Trump uh, is really taking the, right. the lead on this in her father's administration. Right. You know, before something gets crafted in Washington, what's your message to the administration? Go do it, do it. Um, I would make it a priority, I think particularly because this president- Government funded? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, I, and I think it's an, we think of it as an investment, mm -hmm. not as an expense. The problem is we thought of it as those pesky women and those pesky babies looking for a handout. I would frame this as an investment in closing the retirement savings gap. You like to quote Rihanna, work, 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 <laughs> right? She says it a little bit more eloquently. Work, 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 work. It's a me heavy work, 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 For women out there coming up, and they look at you and they, their eyes are wide. What do you say to them? What would you have done differently? And what are you most proud of that you've done that you would advise them to do? So I would say work, 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 work. That I have found with all the ups and downs I've had that there is a high correlation, not every day, not every year, between hard work and success. And that if you're working hard and you got your head up a little bit, you're not just at your desk, but you know people in your industry, you're keeping up with the trends, you're sharing advice and information with folks, so you're sort of out there. I've found good things happen. Mm -hmm.